This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. Life and Death. I'm William Shatner. Tonight on Rescue 911, true stories of caring people who strive to the best of their abilities to change the course of events. We begin on the night of November 10th, 1989 in Desert Springs, Arizona, where Don Jeanson was overseeing a youth group camp in front of the church where he was pastor. Don's 12-year-old daughter, Susanna, was sharing a tent with a group of girls her age, including Beth Edelman. We were looking at pictures of all my friends. Even though it was late, we were all wide awake. Around 11 p.m., Don gathered the group together for a walk through the neighborhood. Spread out, wait. We went on this hike down this small residential street. It was a nice night. It was quiet. I just felt that everything was under control. My son Jeremy and Susanna both were playing kick the can. before me and under my breath I said oh no not my daughter not my daughter Go on. I, I just couldn't imagine how she could fit between the engine and the pavement there wasn't room for her I, I felt sure that she was dead I couldn't get to her I could, I could barely tell whether or not she was breathing. I said, Susanna, I'm going to stay here with you. Just let her know that I was right there. I feel like I should do something. Don called his wife, Diana, from the scene of the accident. I'll never forget the ring. And then there was Don on the other line. Hello, Diana. All I heard was these sirens, and he's screaming over the top of it. I can't hear you. Susanna was hit by a car. Nothing in your whole life can prepare you for those kinds of feelings. You see them healthy and happy playing one moment, and then you get the phone call. And you wonder, am I ever going to see him again, alive? When we continue, I didn't want to believe it, that a tragedy like this could strike my family. It seemed like I was in a nightmare and couldn't get out. When 12-year-old Susanna Jeanson was struck by a car on a church camp outing, she was pinned beneath a vehicle. Her father, Don, watched helplessly as he waited for the rescue units to arrive. 
In less than two minutes, Glendale fire units got to the scene, including paramedic Armando Hernandez. Dispatch a helicopter. When we saw the pair of legs underneath the vehicle, I asked for a helicopter. We didn't know what type of head injury and internal injury she had, but we knew she was pretty serious. We're here to help you, okay? What well, we got, Armando? Oh. Looks like we got a girl here that's dead. Okay? She's got a lot of blood. She had a lot of blood in her mouth. Yeah, she's yelling. Okay, sir, she won't respond to me. She wouldn't respond to me at all. And at that time, I could smell some flesh burning. Her arm was pinned against the exhaust pipe, and that's what was burning was her arm. The driver who had hit Susanna went to get a floor jack from his house just two blocks away. I was terrified. Please, God, just don't let her be paralyzed. We got a jack coming, okay? The fireman actually got under the car with my daughter, shielded her from these hot, burning pipes, and pulled her out. I didn't watch any of that. I couldn't. Let's get her away from the car. I didn't want to believe it that a tragedy like this could strike my family. It just. It just seemed impossible. It seemed like I was in a nightmare and couldn't get out. Susanna arrived at the hospital within 40 minutes. The insult to the head was so bad it was like a, an egg, a cracked egg. Many, many breaks. She was in shock, cold and gritting her teeth and did not know me at all. That was the last time I saw her conscious. I'll run out and talk to him. Among those treating her at St. Joseph's Hospital was nurse Steve Nelson. She was bleeding throughout her body. And we've replaced her blood volume at least two times. At this point, Finally, a young doctor sat us down and he said, medically speaking, they couldn't do anything else for her. In the next 15 minutes or half an hour, you could lose her. I noticed that you folks believe in prayer. He says, now's the time to pray. Well, we, we all joined hands. Uh, and then about a half hour after that, he said, the bleeding has totally stopped. And we just, we just knew it was a miracle. Susanna had broken more than a half a dozen major bones and suffered severe head trauma in the accident. Over the next couple of days, her condition deteriorated. In an attempt to ease the pressure and reduce brain swelling, doctors put her in a drug-induced coma. During the surgery, the neurosurgeon left off a large piece of her skull to allow for the brain to swell. Her brain had swollen so much, they couldn't even put the piece of her skull back on. Susanna's family came to the hospital every day. But during the following week, her condition continued to worsen. The neurosurgeon told them there was a procedure that might be used to try to drain the excess fluid on her brain. But the operation was very dangerous. If it failed, Susanna could die instantly. Literally, this is our last hope. It may not work. I have no choice. Pressures inside of her head slowly returned to normal. But Susanna was still comatose. Nothing worked on her body. She's in her own coma now. As Susanna's vital organs began to shut down, Dr. Bob Graham gave her only days to live. We did not know if her brain was alive or dead at that stage. We could not pick up any brain waves on the EEG. The chances of her surviving be a normal child, probably one in a hundred thousand, one in a million. Jeremy's been going to school now. Suzanne had survived so much already. I think it's kind of hard. And at that point, she still was hanging in there. We touch her, we put lotion on her. 
Grandma's here every day. And telling her about our days. And Grandpa's still helping. Telling her about her friends. Susanna remained in a coma for more than two months. Three separate times her heart stopped beating and she had to be resuscitated. What's the pressure doing? You feel like what else is going to happen to her? There is nothing left. And eventually, it didn't even resemble Susanna. Just a tiny bit of purple nail polish. That reminded me of Susanna. You loved her, you missed her, and you go in and want to see her, and it wasn't her. She was gone. The argument really was, when do we pull the plug? January 8th, 1990, we spent an extra long time in intensive care. The next morning, Darlene, her nurse, called. And you have to understand, whenever the phone rang at our house, you're waiting for, we're really sorry. Darlene? Darlene said, Susanna opened her eyes and just started watching me work. Her eyes followed me around the bed. We could hardly get dressed fast enough to go down there. She mouthed the words, hi, mom. She had recognition in her eyes. It was like your daughter had been reborn. It's like the greatest dream you could ever have came true. Tests revealed that Susanna's brain was still functioning normally. But she faced months of painful physical, occupational, and speech therapy to relearn everything. And it was grueling. But it did not stop the therapist. They were geared to push her. She'd see them coming in, and she would openly weep because she knew it was going to hurt. But by the end of April, Susanna was able to take some steps. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Susanna Jeanson spent seven months in the hospital recovering from her massive internal injuries and many broken bones. It's been two years since the accident, and except for some weakness in her lungs, she continues to develop like any other 14-year-old. A biggest accomplishment in my comeback, I thought, was when I finally was able to walk because I don't even know how it felt to be able to walk before my accident. So it was really a big accomplishment to me. Sometimes I think it should have been me so she wouldn't have to go through it. I feel a lot closer to her now. I can tell you that Susanna is everything she used to be. She's happy. She giggles again. It's incredible. How happy can a mom be when she's had her kid taken away and then given back? I'm very grateful for all the work that all the doctors and nurses and friends did for me. Susanna has left a wake of medical people profoundly astounded by what she survived, but yet they shouldn't forget for a moment that it's they that helped her pull it off. I really felt that if, if she died, I wouldn't be the same. A part of me would die without this little bundle of joy. <laughs> I was in, in, in danger of never being the same person, and somehow, <laughs> I am. She's been through death. She knows what life's all about, you know. People and love. Family. I'm looking forward to what life has in store for me still. I'm dying to find out what it is too.